Along with its siblings Pac-Man and Galaga, Dig Dug is one of those Namco arcade games that everyone's heard of, and why not? Dig Dug is simple and fun, with a distinctive enough style to stick in your memory. The player controls this helmeted miner man who burrows through what seems to be a desert, wielding a pump to inflate monsters called Figars and Pukas to pop them like balloons. Which is actually extremely horrifying if you think about it. But there is another. Dig Dug 2! Not so beloved is the sequel to Dig Dug, released into arcades in 1985. Dig Dug 2 is a lot of fun, it just never caught on. Perhaps the marriage of a pump-wielding digger and tropical islands never quite clicked. Still not as much of a departure as Pac-Man 2. In 1986, a port of Dig Dug 2 was released to the Famicom. This version is nearly arcade perfect, although the colors are slightly different. In the arcade game, Dig Dug's face is flesh-colored, but here it's blue. I suppose the original idea was that he didn't need a helmet when on land? Also, Dig Dug's eyes are see-through for some reason. Shares this eye-hole phenomenon with the pukas, too. By the way, this man's name isn't actually Dig Dug. Years later in the Mr. Driller series, Namco depicted him as a gruff, divorced, middle-aged man named Taizo Hori. Makes sense. His ex-wife is the space warrior Kissy from the terrifying Baraduke, confirming that Dig Dug is set in a far-flung sci-fi future. As you can see in Dig Dug 2, Taizo navigates an archipelago of extremely small islands. Like in the original, we must kill all the Pukas and Figars to advance to the next stage, or wait around for the last one to escape. But instead of burrowing through the earth, Taizo sprints above ground and nowhere else. The digging has already been dug. Instead, he uses a jackhammer to bore pegs into the soil, creating cracks that will sink portions of the island, whichever side of the crack has less total land. Sinking chunks of the island can sink the monsters with them, netting higher scores. But the monsters, after a certain amount of time, will speed up. At first, Dig Dug 2 is easy. The first nine levels feature cracks pre-made for large combos, and the monsters aren't too fast. That all changes in round 10, though. Here, with monsters hot on our tail, we're scrambling to drill some cracks to even have a hope of defending ourselves. The monsters can't walk across the cracks for some reason, which buys us a few seconds to pump them up, if we're lucky. I got frustrated and gave up here many times, but through perseverance, I got through. Afterwards, though, Dig Dug 2 is never the same. The monsters are faster, and it goes from a leisurely time to a life-and-death struggle between man and monster on isolated chunks of rock. Even the environment's colors become bleaker. After round 16, there's a little cutscene, similar to those cute theater segments in Pac-Man. Dig Dug 2 is very disturbing, the way it glamorizes the slaughter of the creatures living on these islands. We're supposed to laugh at this puka's exceptionally brutal death. They're not mindless monsters, you know. In Pac-Man World, we clearly see that pukas are people, not animals. Though Pac-Man World 2 features chipmunk-sized pukas as mindless creatures, Dig Dug 2 clearly deals in the person-sized variety. After how many of their brothers and sisters he slaughtered, the Figars and Pukas will give Taizo no quarter. Knowing he's beyond redemption, this blood-soaked shell of a man will go out fighting. Overall, I prefer Dig Dug 2 to its predecessor. These islands allow for relatively complex strategy, which you're going to need to survive the later levels, and feel somehow freeing compared to the original's narrow tunnels. I don't think Dig Dug 2 has an ending, but then again, I'm not sure the levels ever started to loop either. But what's the story here? The NES release subtitles the game Trouble in Paradise. 
So I assume Taizo went on a trip to these islands to relax with tropical drinks with little umbrellas in them. But when he found these rampaging pukas and figars, he grabbed his pump and drill and went after them. But why? Look at these islands. They're practically just rocks. There are no people or even buildings for the monsters to possibly bother. Who's Taizo helping? Besides, we're not saving these islands. We're destroying them as we go. Whatever country this archipelago belongs to is losing land in this deal. Although somebody was already at work doing that, judging from the pegs and cracks already here, who planted those? Did the monsters? Is Taizo just carrying out the enemy's will by destroying the islands like the Pukas wanted to begin with? Why does Taizo need to kill every last one of them anyway? What was he doing in the original Dig Dug? Why does he want to hunt these creatures to extinction? Perhaps when Taizo went on holiday here and saw the Pukas and Figars, he flew into a pathological rage and, having been estranged from his family, alone with no one to call him back to himself, won't stop to notice the blood and viscera splattered over his body and the ecological ruin of the islands he was ostensibly defending until the dust has already settled and there is no one left to save. I can't blame Kissy for leaving him. Two decades later, Namco returned to Dig Dug 2 in the Nintendo DS game Dig Dug Digging Strike, combining the island-sinking action with the original side-scrolling tunnels. Incredibly, in 2008, Namco, well, Bandai Namco, released a Dig Dug 2 MMO. It shuttered in just a year. Best I can tell, that closes the Dig Dug saga. In conclusion, Dig Dug 2 is a silly, addictive, fast-paced, emotionally searing story of spiritual and environmental devastation. When you sink just one square of island, a fish hops out. Oh, that's Taizo Hori. The next Famicom Adventures is going to be about Esper Dream. I'm also going to be uploading an actually good video in the next few days, so, you know, if you want to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you like the video, you could please hit that thumbs up button, or you could watch some of these other videos here, or, you know, you could do whatever you want with your day. Okay, bye.